Hello everyone, welcome to this part 7 of me creating a 2 degrees of freedom pen plotter robot. It's been a while since I give you some updates, I was vacationing for Christmas, then also a bunch of freelance projects arrived, made a couple of other videos, etc, 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 but still was able to make a little bit of progress. So what is new from the last video? If you recall correctly, if you didn't see it, I will highly suggest you to do so, we were working on the pen collet, what would essentially hold the pen and being able to go up and down the paper, the z-axis if you will. And so. We had a prototype that works, it still looks very very flimsy, I would love to have something that is like a little bit more robust in the future, but again the goal right now is to have a proof of concept prototype. So we have this component and we have the robot itself for the different joints that move to an x and y coordinate, it would be nice to join the two together. Right? Well, this is what I've been tinkering on. So this is one of the joints. To be very exact, it is the top and defector joint. And uh, this little very ugly but efficient piece of product is what would we attach the actual servo motor to. Yeah, this thing right there. Those holes, boom, well, going to this hole right there. I would really like to have like a, an actual digital representation of the robot, but I don't think if I'm ready yet for that on on shape. Anyways, I printed it and it turns out it's not looking half bad. Apparently the screws that I took are a little bit too thick, which is usually a good thing, but on this case the head is too large. The head of the, head of the screw. The head of the screw is too large. And so that doesn't allow the servo motor to go up and down the shaft. So we need to do a few modifications right there. But apart from that, it seems it seems now that we have everything to be able to start to trace some things. And that is obviously pretty exciting. And also, now that we have this in a in somewhat of a direction of where we would like to go, I asked a few colleagues who are closer to the embedded system type of things, built a software I could use for PCB design. And they directed me to KiCad, a software I do not know shit about. So I did do some PCB design in the past, but like very, very basic stuff using something called Easy EDA. So really not the most professional thing ever, but it, it really did the job. It was directly uh, related to GLC, PCB or whatever to do your stuff. But in any case, this apparently is the shit. It's also open source and we do love some free stuff. Anyway, so I think I will give myself the challenge to create at the very least the schematics for the project and see where that could go. So yeah, I can already feel the palpitations of learning a new piece of software, not knowing where shit goes. And I actually already started to read a little bit about the documentation and uh, it feels... Wow. Jesus Christ, it feels a tiny bit old school, but again, we're here for a good beautiful challenge. And uh, along with that, um, I don't know if you recall, but last time we talked about this, we were blocked a tiny bit. So the way my robot works at the moment is that I have an ESP32 waiting for a new line of code. It's essentially a very simplified G code. And so the serial port of the ESP32, well, let me, let me actually do a little bit of a drawing. So ESP, this is the microcontroller that will control the motors to make the robot move. So yeah, it, it could be something like this, yeah, if, if you wish. So this thing right there needs to receive some information, right? The information is coming from my PC with, for the moment, a Python API. The Python API is gonna create a, just like I said, a modified, very simplified version of G-code and send it to the ESP line by line. And so the way it works on the ESP is that the ESP is waiting for a line and once it gets it, it does the movement left and right or wherever on the robot. And then at the end of that, sends some data back to the PC to say, hey, I am ready for the next line. And then the next line is sent. The thing is, that little back and forth at the end takes some time. So apparently, seeing a few comments on the last video, because again, I read those comments, some ready-made solutions do exist for me to essentially buffer the incoming data and just use it when I need it on the ESP32. So like having a little bit of a memory right there that like store these lines and then use them according to when the next one is used. I really, I really need to like do something else for those drawings because they're like, how? Like someone new coming to the video, you see this, like, what is that? A new tattoo or something? But I also thought to myself, like, obviously that buffering data type of stuff would be like the more professional way of going about it. But I was tinkering and uh, maybe there is a more optimized way of doing the thing that I'm doing right now, literally sending line by line without having this little bit of pause that we have currently. And I thought about it and like, let me try to represent time-wise how it's working right now. So vertically, this would be the axis of time. So this is the ESP and this is my PC. And it rhymes, just fucking nice. So the way it works currently, the ESP is in a waiting state for a new line. 
the PC sends it to it. While that is happening, the PC is waiting, it's in a waiting state, for a line that says like, hey, I am ready for the next line. While that's happening, the SP just advances and then does the motor manipulation, just essentially positioning the motors where they should be. And once they reach the desired position, so like it would be an X and Y and now newly a Z for the pen, it sends back a data that says, hey, I am ready for the next line. And then the next line is sent and then we go back to the beginning. But that back and forth right there, that takes some time because like since it is serial communication, it's not just like one piece of string that is sent directly. It's just like according to the baud rate, how many bits can you send per second? So while that is happening, everything is on pause, right? And I thought to myself like, what if we put this before that and then we make that work while the motors are moving? So essentially do it this way. The ESP is waiting for a new line. The PC sends it to it. We do some code that wouldn't take that much time. It would just be like some string validation or something like that that says like, yeah, this line is prone to be sent to the motors. And if we validate it, since the PC will be in the waiting state, the Python API, I should say, we send back the data, yeah, be prepared for the next line. And then after that, we do the motor manipulations. And once that is done, since the PC in the meantime will just be waiting for the thing to be received, like it will just send and send and send and send the actual string. Once we are ready to receive it, boom, we just go back to the beginning. And then that should maybe, this is again a theory, get rid of the little pause that we have between each position. Again, it's an idea. We shall see. And so yeah, that is it for this update. It seems that more and more people are arriving on this YouTube channel and have a few like recurrent viewers, according to my analytics that are right there, that come back every time and are not subscribed. So again, it's free. It's always pretty nice to see little numbers going up. And uh, yeah, all of that to say, like, comment, subscribe, and stimulate the little algorithm of YouTube. Um, okay, I think that's it for the updates. I hope you enjoyed it. I do see some of you commenting, giving some tips, which is always nice to have, learning a bunch on this project, and I'm very, very excited for what will be next, like the PCB design, and uh, maybe learning some more things about code, just uh, stimulating things in general. All right, thank you very much for hanging around. That's it for me, and uh, I see you soon on the internet. Bye-bye, everyone.